One common device we use every day is the power brake which allows our car to come to a stop easily, safely and firmly, with a very small effort on the brake pedal. Prior to its invention, the effort of our foot was applied directly to the hydraulic pump, which in turn activated the wheel brake cylinders. The modern braking system consists of the normal hydraulic pump with the addition of an ingenious pneumatic mechanism that allows for vigorously braking by exerting only a slight pressure on the pedal. The mechanism consists of a metal canister divided in two by a rubber diaphragm whose function we are going to see very soon. As preliminary information, please note that all gasoline-powered car engines have an air intake to burn the fuel. This input is often called an intake manifold, and the engine takes air from the atmosphere through the manifold. We could well compare this suction force with the operation of a vacuum cleaner. By connecting a metal pipe to this intake manifold, we can run a hose from the intake manifold to the power brake canister. In the upper left side of the canister, we can see the air connection to the vacuum line or suction line coming from the intake manifold of the engine. Inside the fitting mounted on the canister is a valve which allows the air contained in the canister to be removed but does not allow any air from the atmosphere to enter the canister in the event of a failure of the vehicle engine. This way, as long as the engine is running, there will be a partial vacuum inside the canister. In the center of the rubber diaphragm, there's a normally open valve which links both halves of the canister so there is a partial vacuum inside the canister. When we press the brake pedal, we move a metal shaft which is connected with some free play to the rubber diaphragm and which shuts the valve placed in the center of the rubber diaphragm while a second valve opens the right half of the canister to allow the atmospheric pressure of one kilogram per square centimeter to come inside the canister right side. This action reduces the vacuum at the right side of the rubber diaphragm while the vacuum remains the same on the left side of the diaphragm. This pressure difference causes the diaphragm to move to the left, reaching the end of its free play, whereupon it drags the metal shaft and activates the hydraulic pump and stops the car. Releasing the brake pedal closes the atmospheric air intake and restores the partial vacuum throughout the tank, whereupon the rubber diaphragm returns to its initial position and releases the brakes. In the event of engine failure with consequent loss of vacuum, the vacuum fitting valve closes and maintains a certain degree of vacuum for further braking, covering the eventuality of emergency braking. After this, the vehicle will continue with its functional hydraulic braking system, although a considerably greater effort will have to be applied to activate the hydraulic pump directly through the metal shaft. In other words, as long as there is a partial vacuum in the engine manifold, the pressure on the brake pedal will simply switch valves that direct the braking, while the actual force applied to the brake system will come from the atmospheric pressure. In case of failure of the pneumatic system, more pressure must be applied to the pedal in order to activate the hydraulic pump directly. I hope this video has been useful to you. Please subscribe to my channel.